<sighs> Hello. My name is Nigel. Iceland. And today, we're going to be talking about Robert Browning. <clears throat> Born in 1812 in Camberwell, a south section of London. He's perhaps one of the most famous romantic Victorian poets of all time. Today, I, Nigel Iceland, will take you on a journey through the life and excitement of Robert Browning. <sighs> Robert Browning, growing up alongside his only younger sister, Sariana, was not exactly well-behaved in school. In fact, he liked to lash out, so he didn't go to school, he was homeschooled in his father's library of over 6,000 volumes. Browning became very intelligent. By the age 12, he had written two books of poetry, full books, and he had spoke over four languages. He spoke French, Greek, Italian, English, and a little bit of some others. Now, uh, at this point, Robert was ready to go to college. Uh, he went to the University of London, but he only stayed for two terms because he just didn't like the education there. That's when he decided to travel so he could get a better view of the world. So he went to Russia, and he went to Italy, which he found he really liked. Now... <sighs> At this point in his life, Robert began to publish his first famous works on his father's money. Uh, he was still living at home when he published Paraclesis. This is a historical poem slash book um, about an alchemist who really lived, inspired by an alchemist who really lived. Uh, then Robert uh, met another man who began to publish his plays. He became very famous for such as one entitled Stratford, and another entitled Bells and Pomegranates, which was a series of plays. plays. Unfortunately, in 1838, Robert had his first failure. It was entitled Sordello, and the critics of the day named it to not make any sense and trying too hard to be intellectual. Unfortunately, Robert was very depressed about this and didn't write for a while, but he came back around and it spurred him on to write some of his best works. Now, it was at this point that Robert began communicating with another poet by the name of Elizabeth Barrett. They quickly fell in love. In fact, we have some footage of their earliest communications. <sighs> Dear Elizabeth, I've been an admirer of your poetry for some time now, and I must say, I believe I am in love. If you wish to know me, please respond. Robert. Robert! I've read your poetry, and I love you. Perhaps we could get to know each other. Elizabeth. <laughs> Nigel Iceland again. I hope you enjoyed our short video of uh, Robert and Elizabeth's communication. While they did fall in love rather quickly, unfortunately, Robert's parents did not approve of this marriage, so they communicated in secret until Robert was 35 years old, at which point they eloped to Italy. And it's no secret that Elizabeth was perhaps the greatest source of inspiration for Robert. <sighs> oh, Elizabeth! Hello? Elizabeth, you remember how I wrote Paraclesis, a historical play? I remember! It was very famous and successful. Elizabeth, I've written this next book for you. It's entitled Men and Women. For me, I'm it's a woman. It's inspired by you, Elizabeth, because I love you. Robert and his wife Elizabeth lived a long, happy life in Italy, where they both composed 
their greatest works of poetry, which go down today in history as the best romantic works of all time. Thank you. This has been an evening with Nigel Iceland.